New Testament scholar Bart Ehrman says that the author of Acts didn't know the Apostle Paul. Ehrman writes that the author of Acts is simply claiming to be a traveling companion of Paul's and therefore unusually well suited to give a true account of Paul's message and mission, but he almost certainly was not a companion of Paul's. On the one hand, he was writing long after Paul and his companions were dead. Scholars usually date Acts to around 85 CE or so, over two decades after Paul's death. On the other hand, he seems to be far too poorly informed about Paul's theology and missionary activities to have been someone with first-hand knowledge. One of the particular reasons Ehrman thinks that the author of Acts didn't have first-hand knowledge is that the story of Paul's conversion version seemingly contradicts what Paul himself wrote in his letter to the Galatians. Galatians 1 16 through 20 says, God was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went away into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years I went to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him for 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. What I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Ehrman thinks that he sees a big discrepancy here. He writes, This emphatic statement that Paul is not lying should give us pause. He is completely clear. He did not consult with others after his conversion, did not see any of the other apostles for three years, and even then he did not see anyone except Cephas and Jesus' brother James. This makes the account found in the book of Acts very interesting indeed. According to Acts 9, immediately after Paul converted, he spent some time in Damascus with the disciples, and when he left the city, he headed directly to Jerusalem, where he met with the apostles of Jesus. On all counts, Acts seems to be at odds with Paul. Did he spend time with other Christians immediately in Acts or not in Paul? But this alleged contradiction between Acts and Galatians is hardly unresolvable. The author of Acts states that Paul was forced to leave Damascus by a plot against him after many days. That's Acts 9.23. This time indicator could easily include three years involving a trip to Arabia and a return to Damascus, which the author of Acts either wasn't aware of or simply omitted. You might think this is a bit of a stretch, but looking at other texts, we read that many days can in fact be as long as three years. Take a look at 1 Kings 2 38 through 39. It reads, So Shammai lived in Jerusalem for many days, but it happened at the end of three years that two of Shammai's servants ran away to Achish. This contradiction just really isn't all that difficult to resolve. But let's stop and think about Acts and Galatians for just a minute. It might seem like it's no big deal, but if Acts wasn't historical and written much later by someone who had no direct access to the story of Paul's conversion like Ehrman says, why would the author of Acts place it on the way to Damascus and say that Paul went on to the city afterwards? Of all the possible cities where Paul's conversion story might be placed, why Damascus? Acts barely even mentions Damascus at all. Now, one might conjecture that Acts author had access to Galatians and mined it for details to intertwine the story and make it sound credible even if he never knew Paul, wrote later, or wrote a partially fictional story. But the fact that Ehrman calls this a contradiction seems to rule that possibility out. As Lydia McGrew points out in her book Hidden in Plain View, if the author of Acts were working from the text of Galatians and attempting to make his own work correspond to Galatians, he would almost certainly not have inserted Damascus into his narrative on the basis of Paul's passing remark while leaving out any reference to Paul's trip to Arabia or the passing of three years. Why would the author of Acts have inserted a subtle correspondence with Galatians while leaving out the more obvious points that require harmonization. Such a hypothesis requires an author of Acts who is both carefully devious and surprisingly bumbling at the same time. The casual correspondence concerning Damascus is evidence that the author of Acts knew about Paul independently of the epistle to the Galatians. So far from being a contradiction, these two reconcilable variations are evidence of both independence between the two narratives and for the truth of both. In both Galatians and Acts, we find substantial unity and partial diversity and a reconcilable nature of that diversity. And this is exactly what we would expect from truthful accounts. This isn't what we would expect from fictions and forgeries. This simply isn't the kind of contradiction that should cause us to doubt Luke's reliability. Ehrman is just plain wrong here.